Hey guys, it's RJ. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Now in today's episode, I'm going to answer a question that I get a fair amount of in the comments, and that is specifically around my chase cards. So in today's show, I'm going to answer some of those questions. Specifically, what are the chase cards in my lineup? Why did I go with those cards? What's my overall chase strategy? Why do I like chase and talk about chase so much? And I'll also cover a little bit about where my plans are headed towards the future of my credit card strategy. So if that sounds interesting to you and you want the burning answer to these questions, go ahead, hit the subscribe button, and let's get to work. Okay, we'll start with a question that I see a lot, and that's which chase cards do I have? So I'll start from chronological order where I remember them. I'll briefly go through them and why I got them. We won't do a whole review. Again, I've got a lot of videos on this on the channel already, so if you're interested, uh, definitely check out the archives. But way back in 2013, I started out and I got the OG Freedom card that's since been retired by Chase. Now at the time in 2013, I was probably 19, 20 years old, give or take. And at the time, I think I had to buy something, and so I saw an ad for the Chase card, and it made a lot of sense. It was like, hey, spend $500, we'll give you $200 cash back. So go, oh, well, this makes a lot of sense because I need to spend $500. And that's about the full thought process that went into getting the OG Freedom card. Now, I did know a little bit about its rotating quarterly categories, but it ended up quickly becoming the card that I used all the time. As I was just graduating from a plain Jane vanilla card from my local credit union I had gotten a few years ago just to start building credit. So you fast forward again to about 2016, and I think that's when the Freedom Unlimited came out, and that's when I saw yet another sign-up bonus, probably very similar to the OG Freedom one, spend 500 to get 200 back. However, the Chase Freedom Unlimited had the 1.5x on all purchases. So I can do a little bit of math here and say, oh, well, I might as well add the Freedom Unlimited, get the 1.5x on everything and it'll also be a much easier card to use going forward and I did kind of balance the Freedom Unlimited between the OG Freedom but honestly if I remember back I think I was just really using the Freedom Unlimited the most. Now interestingly enough also 2016 was the year where the Sapphire Reserve got launched and it came out with that huge 100k offer. Now I remember at the time really wanting that card because of the sign up bonus but at the time I was just not in a space where I could justify paying a $550 annual fee. I really wasn't traveling much if at all. Definitely didn't have enough money and definitely didn't think about and definitely thought it was kind of crazy to pay an annual fee to have a credit card at the time. So as a result I passed on the Sapphire Reserve when it was hot at the moment but that does take us to our next card fast forward to 2018 and that's when I ended up picking up the Sapphire Reserve so two years later I remember getting invited by a buddy and a co-worker out to Vegas for a few days and I thought hey this would be the perfect time to actually go back and pick up that Sapphire Reserve as I am going on a trip I can go ahead and get my priority pass my global entry get the sign up bonus use a $300 travel credit all in one go and that's probably the time where I started to put the pieces of the Chase Trifecta together Together. So fast forward a little bit after getting the Sapphire Reserve, after Marriott rebranded to Marriott Bonvoy, that's when they relaunched some of their cards on the Chase side, and I picked up the Marriott card simply because it had a 100,000 point sign-in bonus at the time, which if you stay in really cheap Marriott hotels like I do, that's good for about four to five free nights on the house, and of course it just had a $95 annual fee. Now I've since downgraded that card to the one below it, I believe it's the Marriott Bold. So after the Marriott card, I took a detour to the American Express side of the house. Now if folks do like this video, then I will go ahead and make one on those Amex cards as well. But then I came back to Chase in late Q3 of 2020 when the Freedom Flex card launched. Uh, you guys all remember it. it was all anyone was talking about for a good month or so. So I was able to pick up the Freedom Flex card. Now I was definitely surprised I was under 524, but I just made it in and picked up that card, which is really cool because it had that elevated sign-up bonus that also worked for grocery stores up to $12,000 in spend for the first year of having the card. Now the downside of picking up the Flex was it put me over Chase's 524 rule and I was now locked back out of Chase cards. So I was on a cool down period for a few months. Also at the end of 2020, we saw Chase give some high sign up bonuses to the ink cards, specifically the cash and the unlimited. So I knew at the time I wanted to go after both of these as I didn't have any business cards and I ended up getting out of 524 purgatory in March of 2021. And that's when I added the ink cash. I've talked about the sign-up bonus before there, but it's got the 75,000 ultimate reward points for about $7,500 in spend, which is a lot, but it is a business card. So for business cards, 7,500 is not actually that bad or unreasonable. So I was able to pick up the ink cash card 
And so with the help of a friend borrowing some spend, I was able to quickly hit that minimum spend for the cash card. So I turned right back around and applied and got approved for the Ink Unlimited card, which actually just came in the mail today, believe it or not. Now the reason I went after these two cards, these Chase Business cards, is because the cool thing about Chase Business cards is they don't count against your cap of 524. So as it sits right now, I'm still at 424, even though I've been able to add two new Chase cards. So anyways, that brings you up to current date where my Chase roster sits. I'll be working through that Ink Unlimited sign-up bonus over the next few months and take advantage of that. Now let's answer another question I get about my Chase cards, and that is why do I like Chase cards so much? And I think the key thing here for me is the trifecta setup. You can assemble a lot of Chase cards, they come together like Voltron basically, and you can do it all for a relatively low annual fee. Now you can have your Anchor card be the Sapphire Preferred at $95, or the Reserve at $550, and either way, if you put enough spend and use your cards in the right multiplier categories, you'll end up making more than enough to offset that annual fee. And I've actually gone through the math and my keeper canceled the Sapphire Reserve decision that I'll link down below if you guys want to see how the math works out or how the math could potentially work out. Now number two, following up on the trifecta and how easy it is to earn points on chase cards in my opinion, it's the redemptions. Again, part of the chase trifecta is it gives you that 1.5x from going booking travel through the travel portal. Now it's widely understood that booking travel through the travel portal really is more beneficial if you're booking economy style stuff, so kind of like back of the plane, which is fine because that's generally what I book anyways. I'm usually trying to stretch my points out and go farther for less, and I'm kind of less concerned with how much I get per point, you know, that cents per point calculation, and I'm really more so concerned with just not spending my own money on travel, so it works out really well for me being able to get that 1.5x bonus, booking a ticket I'd probably book anyways. Now additionally I also like how for the most part Chase is pretty laid back about most things. Now again I have Amex cards and I love Amex customer service. They're very helpful and I do think they're probably the top tier in the business. However I personally so far never really had a bad encounter with Chase. So a few examples of me dealing with Chase customer service and them helping me out and being kind of laid back. When I applied for the Marriott card back in the day that we referenced earlier, I remember I ended up with a sign-up bonus that at the time was pretty nice, 75,000 points, something like that. But then a month or so later, they actually increased that offer to 100K and because you can just call in with Chase, and as long as it's, you've applied within like the last 90 days, uh, Chase will at least match that bonus for you, which is pretty helpful and nice of them to do. Additionally, as you might have guessed, I like their stance on gift cards. Now, they've recently updated their terms and conditions, but they refrain from calling out buying gift cards specifically, um, which really helps out a lot, especially as one of my favorite strategies. Because of the Chase cards I've assembled, having basically two Freedom cards in the OG and the Flex, and the Ink Cash card that's giving you 5x back at office supply stores, because Chase doesn't really frown upon gift cards or really ban you from buying gift cards, if you're willing to go buy gift cards or even the Visa reloads if you really want to push it, I can basically get 5x back on just about any purchase I make so long as I'm willing to make that extra stop. And I'm a dude with a lot of free time, so I definitely go out of my way to do so. Additionally, I've also had good experience going through the Chase reconsideration line. To get my Ink Cash and my Ink Unlimited approved, I had to call in both times to reconsideration, and they were super helpful really in my opinion coming from a seeking to understand spot and we were able to overturn those denials into approvals for both of those cards so I definitely give their customer service high marks across the board. Now, of course, that's not to say it's a total love fest for Chase here. I do think there's a few things they could work on, and I've went a little bit in depth in my Make the Sapphire Reserve Card Great Again video. Again, link down below. But the Chase offer section definitely needs a revamp. It is just lacking sorely compared to its Amex counterpart, Amex offers. And it's definitely undeniable that American Express cards have the better benefits over the Chase Sapphire line. Now, yes, the Sapphire Reserve has some solid benefits. Priority pass access is great. Primary collision damage waiver is an underrated benefit that doesn't get enough play. But when you want benefits, you definitely go for the Amex card. So I would like to see Chase kind of partner with some of their travel partners, maybe bring in some hotel statuses, airline statuses, something like that to kind of match Amex on the benefits category because that part is just not close. 
Now moving on to another part of the question is where am I headed as far as my card strategy or my chase card strategy? Well, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, I'm sitting at 424 right now. I've been going after the chase business card line because that does not count against my 524 cap. So currently there is one chase card left in the business lineup and that is the ink preferred. Now I would love to pick that one up as well. However, that's a little bit harder. You really need a specific use case for it because it does have that great 100K sign-up bonus. However, that it has a $15,000 minimum spend requirement. So that is just kind of one of those things you're just going to wait for the specific use case. So for myself, it'll probably be getting into another rental property where I need to do some remodeling or something like that. That could potentially make sense. But aside from the ink preferred, there's not really a chase card that I have my eye on right now at the moment. So I'll probably just wait it out hit the unlimited bonus and then go after the ink preferred if a use case presents itself. Now, of course, you never know what other cards card issuers are going to come up with, but I am definitely trying to maximize my last 524 slot uh, before I'm locked out of chase for quite some time. Now, I do get the question a lot of, is 524 one of those overrated rules? And I don't think 524 is overrated at all because again, even if you don't want to go after chase cards long-term and keep them, you might hate their rotating quarterly category cards. Cards. You still might as well go ahead and get those chase cards for the sign up bonus before you're locked out of chase for good because if not you're just kind of leaving money on the table and it's much much harder to double back later in the game and pick up the chase cards. So that's the primary reason why I always kind of remind folks of 524. So anyways guys I hope this answered your questions that you've asked a lot in the comments below. Of course if you like this one drop me a thumbs up down below. If you found it particularly interesting then consider subscribing to the channel. Posting content just like this about three to four times per week. My question for you guys is let me know your thoughts on chase cards, specifically how you use them. Is 524 overrated in your opinion or what is your favorite chase card and why? Love to hear what you guys are thinking on this. But anyways guys, that's going to do it for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.